Hello, my name is Kyle Warner, and I'm a student majoring in air traffic control here at the University of North Dakota. I'd first like to thank you for tuning into this podcast on radar identification methods. We will explain each method in detail and explain to you how to apply them to real air traffic control scenarios. But first, we need to explain the difference between primary and secondary radar. Primary radar refers to the raw radar return. It shows you the position of the target, but no other information can be seen on the controller's radar scope. Secondary radar is computer-generated information that appears in addition to the primary radar return. It shows the call sign, squawk code, altitude, and ground speed of the aircraft. There are six methods that can be used to radar identify a target. These six methods are divided into two groups. Three methods are used for primary only targets, and three are used for targets displaying secondary information. We'll begin with the primary radar identification methods. The first primary radar identification method is observing a target within one mile of the departure end of the runway. This method is only valid if receiving a rolling call from the control tower. If a rolling call is not received, then another radar identification method must be used. In this example, Northwest 185 is departing from Academy Airport. The tower makes a rolling call to departure. Academy departure. Northwest 185 rolling, Mike with you. Romeo Hotel. Once the aircraft takes off, tower will instruct the pilot to contact the departure controller. Academy departure, Northwest 185 with you climbing through 1,200 through 5,000. The controller sees Northwest 185 within one mile of the departure end of the runway, and radar identifies the target. Northwest 185, Academy departure radar contact. The second method is called position correlation. This method involves the pilot reporting his or her position relative to a fixed or visual reporting point, and the controller observing the target at that location in a heading that is consistent with the pilot's reported intentions. In this example, an aircraft has just taken off from Lazy J Ranch heading north. The pilot is squawking VFR and is requesting flight following. The pilot reports that he is one mile north of Lazy J Ranch. Academy departure, November 219er Delta Lima, we're King Air. We're one mile north of Lazy J Ranch, passing 2,000 for 5,000, requesting traffic advisories. The controller observes the target in that position and radar identifies the target. November 219er Delta Lima, Academy departure radar contact. The third method utilizes identifying turns. An identifying turn is defined as a turn of 30 degrees or more. When issuing identifying turns, be mindful of other aircraft in the area. In this example, Su-55 has taken off from Vinny and is squawking VFR. The pilot requests flight following, and the controller issues an identifying turn. Academy departure, Su-55 is with you three miles north of Vinny Airport, requesting traffic advisory for a Piper Warrior at 6,500. Su-55, Academy Departure, turn 90 degrees right for radar identification. Su-55, right 90 degrees. Once the target is observed making the turn, the controller radar identifies the target, advises the pilot of his position, and instructs the pilot to resume own navigation. Su-55, radar contact, three miles northwest Benny Airport, resume own navigation. Any of these three methods can be used to radar identify a target. However, if at any time you are uncertain of a target's identity, you must use more than one of these methods. For example, if you receive a position report, but several aircraft are in the vicinity of the fix or reporting point, you can issue an identifying turn, or more than one identifying turn, to ensure that you are identifying the correct target. When in doubt, always err on the side of caution. In addition to the three primary radar identification methods, there are also three secondary or beacon methods. The first method involves asking the aircraft to ident. The pilot will activate the ident feature on the aircraft transponder, and the target will begin to blink on the radar scope. In this example, Northwest 185 has departed from Academy, but no rolling call was received. Even though the data tag shows that the aircraft is Northwest 185, 
The controller must use an approved method to radar identify the aircraft. Academy departure, Northwest 185 is with you climbing through 1,400 for 5,000. Northwest 185, Academy departure, ident. Northwest 185, ident. The controller instructs the pilot to ident, observes the target flashing on the radar display, and identifies the target. Northwest 185, radar contact 3 miles north of Academy Airport. The second method involves instructing the pilot to change to a discrete or non-discrete transponder code and to observe the change on the radar display. In this example, November 219er Delta Lima has entered Academy airspace, is squawking VFR, and requesting radar services. Academy approach, November 219er Delta Lima is with you inbound from the north, requesting traffic advisors into Academy. We're at King Air at 4,500. The controller instructs the pilot to squawk 0101 and observes the code change on the radar display. November 219er Delta Lima Academy approach, squawk 0101. November 219er Delta Lima, 0101. The controller then radar identifies the target and advises the pilot of his position. November 219er Delta Lima radar contact, 35 miles north of Academy Airport. The third method is to have the pilot squawk standby. On your radar display, you'll notice that the secondary information will disappear as the pilot changes the transponder to standby mode. Then instruct the pilot to squawk normal and observe on the radar display that the secondary information returns. In this example, Northwest 185 has departed Academy Airport, but no rolling call was received. Academy departure, Northwest 185 is with you climbing through 1,300 for 5,000. Northwest 185, Academy Departure, Squawk Standby. Northwest 185, Squawk Standby. The controller instructs the pilot to squawk standby. The controller observes that the data tag disappears. The controller then instructs the pilot to squawk his assigned code and observes that the data tag returns. Northwest 185, Squawk Normal. Northwest 185, Squawk Normal. The controller then identifies the target and advises the pilot of his position. Now for a quick review. On behalf of UND Air Traffic Control, the Student Air Traffic Controllers Association, and the Aerospace Network, I would like to thank you for tuning in. My name is Kyle Warner. Frequency change approved. For more information on UND Air Traffic Control and to see other videos in this series, visit www.aero.und.edu or search for ATCAST on iTunes University.